In terms of today's presentation, it's in res response to two people I met during my time as an artist, curator, and writer. The first, Rigo23, and Robin Wilkinson I met many years later. So I wanted to start, when I, when I first thought about in inviting you to speak about your experience, I had I kind of imagined and I, I thought about it as you being the voice of Albert and Herman. And when we talked about it last night, you kind of flipped or inverted that and said, no, actually, I'm the, I'm the visual voice of Albert and Herman. I'm out. I'm here. This is me. They have their own voice. I just wanted to, you to talk a little bit about your idea in relation to the voice and, and speaking on behalf of them. Like Mark pointed out in our conversation, I pointed out, uh, explained that I might be the visual, uh, visual voice, but Herman and Albert has always been in, you know, his voice uh, of themselves, because while from prison, they've communicated with thousands of people. Uh, they take the time to write thousands and thousands of letters uh, to people all over the world. And they have been very, very vocal about their situation and about their conditions and the condition of others who are in similar uh, position like themselves. So I kind of inverted that concept because it's deserving of them. I think they are the, the biggest voice. And while I might or may be the visual voice, I think they, Herman and Albert, even though they are entombed um, in prison, and despite the fact that they has now been sent to a um, solitary dormitory instead of a, a solitary cell, which is six by nine by 12, that they endured for nearly 36 years, uh, despite the fact that they have been moved. I think they are the, the loudest voice. Uh, I think they are heard the loudest. So um, I think it was necessary that I make sure uh, everyone knows that Herman and Albert, while everyone else may speak for them, their voice are heard the loudest. I think Herman uh, came up with a phrase while he was at Camp J. They had sent him to Camp J a couple of years ago. And he said something like, and I quote, the deeper they bury me, the louder my voice becomes. And he repeated that three times. He said, <coughs> excuse me, the deeper they bury me, the louder my voice become. The deeper they bury me, the louder my voice become. So with that thought in mind, it was incumbent upon me to make sure that Herman and Albert voices are the loudest. OK. Rigo, I've known for a number of years, as I mentioned. Um, Riga is a Portuguese muralist, painter, and political artist residing in San Francisco, California. He describes himself as a post-revolutionary artist, a reference is to his direct experience of the Portuguese Democratic Revolution in 1974. A recent work in honor of Robert, visible from the Civic Center and United Nations Plaza in San Francisco, the mural simply titled Truth, was completed after the start of America's attack on Afghanistan in 2001 and dedicated to Robert on April 22nd of 2002. Mayor Willie Brown declared that, that day to be Robert King Day in the city of San Francisco. That's correct. Yeah, I think when I first met Robert, he had come out of the airplane in, in San Francisco in April. So he got out in February 8th, 2001. And um, he was traveling with this lady, Althea Francois, and. Uh, we went to pick Robert up at the airport, and we're coming into the parking garage in the San Francisco airport. It's, it's a parking structure that has no walls around it, just has floors and pillars. And as we're getting to the car, um, Robert asked if it was, um, if one could smoke cigarettes there, if it was legal to smoke. And I think at that moment there, I, I don't know, I realized there was something very special going on, that how could somebody that has had this happen to him care, you know, whether it's quote unquote legal or not to smoke cigarettes in a place like that. And, um, and this has kind of never stopped, you know, this sort of 
capacity I think that Robert has to su surprise as to like how careful and considerate he is of the people around him. And uh, so I never thought it would, it's already been now seven years, you know. I didn't think it would be sort of a high that would last this long, but it's been um, just, I don't know, a great joy to spend time and see how, because I think that's, uh, the little that I've understood is that's what it takes is to address every situation as it comes to you, whenever it comes to you, in a way that will guarantee not only your physical survival, but your survival as somebody who's defying and who's, you know, abiding by rules that are of their own making, you know. And um, so it's, it's just been great. <laughs> I don't know. Um.